in today's episode of Creative to Create. I talked to a good close friend of mine, David Figueroa. He's a crazy talented videographer and also an instructor slash black belt in martial arts. We kind of dived into those, both those topics, how he got his starting and how he ended up becoming a freelance videographer owning his own company. We also kind of dived into all the trials and tribulations he faced in 2020 and why it still was the best year ever for him. Coming up. Today's episode is going to be sponsored by my little dog trying to get into every single shot of <laughs> it all. Sweet. Kind of getting right off again into the first kind of bit is just a brief overview, a little backstory to who you are what you do sweet if you want to jump into that yeah sure so um should i start talking about my like where i work and stuff or sure i'll move that for you sure cool um so i do freelance video with uh with my company uh that i started 10 months ago called figaro media and that was in light of covid Of course, because I was working on a freelance team for four years, still work for them, called Swells Creative. And I was primarily a video editor uh, only. So, like, I wasn't on set. Um, I would just get gigabytes and gigabytes of of raw footage and be like, all right, hey, I want you to do the first two rough cuts uh, and then send it over to me for the, you know, for the final cut before I send it off to, uh, to the clients, right? And primarily, uh, what I was doing was food videos for chefs in San Diego. So I've been in the in the pro food game. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Yeah, pro food yeah, game. Pro food game. Um, what do you do for a living? I'm a pro food game video guy. <laughs> no, you just say pro food gamer. <laughs> pro food gamer. So you play video games uh, about food? That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, um, so that's really what I've been doing. Um, like video wise, like professionally for four years. I'm also uh, a martial arts instructor. So I teach Kung Fu and Tai Chi. And uh, when did you start doing that? That was, let's see, I was 13 when I started. I'm 24 and turning 25 in a few months. So it's close to um, like close to 13 years. 13, yeah. Yeah, close to 13 years. So half my life essentially. And then eight years, eight years, two months, I was hired. To be a martial arts instructor. Uh, that's right. So okay. being asked to be uh, a part of the instructor training program, uh, kind of, it's like a nine month long. Wait, no worries, no worries. No, we're good. Cool. Sorry. So the instructor training program is a nine month course, essentially, where you learn how to how to teach, hmm. essentially. So I got that job when I was uh, sixteen. And then when I graduated, I was 17. Wait, so you started doing martial arts at 13. At 13. And then at 16, you're like, we could teach people. That's that's what so happened. So three years later. Three years later. And then... Is there like... Is that the like the belt system or is that like karate? Great, great question. So like our belt system works very much the same way. We, we just call it sashes. Just a different terminology. Same principle. Do you wear it as a belt? I do. Okay. Yeah. So it, it works fundamentally the same way of course there's different variations on like and by 16 were you a black belt no i got my black belt um let's see when was this i got my senior in 2018 so i got my black two years prior to that so 2016 okay so that was year seven wow of me doing doing uh, what when you were at 16 how what belt did you have then uh, I was, when I, when I was asked to be in the instructor training program, I was blue. So that's like halfway to black. And then by the time I tested for purple, like during instructor training. So when I graduated, I was, I was purple. Okay. Right. And so, you know, basically at that point you, I was teaching anything blue and below. Gotcha. Essentially. Right. Yeah. You know, s- stuff that I was comfortable with, uh, had already tested with, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So, okay. um, and just like if I was a student, I would still progress the same, right? Like I would still, you know, do the same tests. Just I was, you know, just a, a level like authority a level above, and I would just be a teacher, right? And so I've been doing that for eight years. So and it, that that was my first job, ever, and I and I still have that first job. So I think that's a that's been a really awesome that's like, cool resume like kind of 
kind of figure like because right off the bat you're like all right i was doing the class something yeah. for fun yeah and it becomes a job that's really cool right and it's funny it's funny that you use that wording um it started out fun and then it became a job is that what most of your life feels like video kind of worked uh very very similarly it worked in the same way where um you know i was just editing stuff i did on the weekend like you know going to a car show with my dad or you know going on a hike with my friends i would you know just bring bring my 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 camera along and you know just film that shoot that edit that down to a minute because this was before instagram tv so yeah. if you guys remember you know that was a minute long that that was it and i had a conversation with my mom, my mom at that point you know this was after i graduated high school so this is also around a little bit before i i got my black sash so this is like 2016 2015 I was like, you know, it'd be super sweet. In fact, no, this is 2016. Um, you know, it'd be super sweet if someone noticed me through Instagram, saw my videos, and then offered me a job. No sooner did I say two weeks later. Oh, wow, two really? Two weeks later, I got the call from from Sam, the the founder of Swell's Creative, and was like, hey, I, you know, I've seen your, your videos on Instagram. I like the way you edit. You know, do you want to come work for me? And part-time? were you posting consistently on Instagram or consistently. just on just like fun videos yeah. you made? And it was it was just it was just weekend stuff. And it was it was getting to the point where like in December when you know I was off of school, I had like at Miracosa, they give you like five weeks off. It's insane. Uh no, no, six weeks. And you know, I was just like, what do I do? And I was at the point where because uh, I took so much footage, I was releasing a new video like every day. For like a week okay and like so i had just like really saturated period where that's what i was doing now that every you know a new video every day for a week was only for a week yeah but it was like, like you know i just kept cranking out content cranking out um you know stuff that i enjoyed doing and you know then i i got noticed and that's like the biggest god moment in to get noticed by right and that's when going into and that company is a freelance company right it is yeah it is okay cool wow and when you're going into videography now mm-hmm. this is how many years from when you've done been in martial arts now before you started doing the, your videography mm-hmm. freelance job so april 2017 was when i started working with swells creative so that's four years almost four years ago next month is four years um, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you started in 2013. Yeah. 2013. So this was four years. You this... were a martial arts instructor for four years. Mm-hmm. And then four years later. Yeah. You become a videographer, yeah. filmmaker. Yeah. Um, when you are looking at videography, does martial arts ever like kind of impact the way you look or the way you are kind of create when you're creating films or videos? Because like question. S- similar, like when I'm creating, like I've been a musician for like eight years now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Same. So it's yeah. like. You and I are both drummers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, like, that makes a complete difference when I go into, like, the editing room in that sense. So Mm -hmm. does that martial arts ever affect you in that way? Um, It's a good question. I think it's a little bit more abstract than it might seem, uh, meaning that martial arts, it gives you, like, so much, uh, like, so many principles, uh, fighting principles, right, self-defense principles, um, things like different attitudes to, to have, like, for your own self-defense, I'll, I'll give you a small example. Um, out of the out of the you know 12, 13 years that I've been doing martial arts, I have never had to use it ever. Like um, as a self-defense, as never, never a self-defense, right? Never has someone like try to you know mug me or attack me, or you know. But you can kick their butt. Oh, hundred percent. Take them down, real right? Quick. Yeah, and and like that. That's the thing. Like, um, how you carry yourself. The confidence that like you admit when or emit when you when you walk when you like go out in and I and I've traveled around the world. I've been to Israel, I've been to Switzerland, Italy, uh, Central America, Honduras, El Salvador, like all these like places, and some of them dangerous, especially in, in Central America. Not once and have I had to use it. One because I believe that you know there is a divine presence watching over me to protect me for the work that I still need to be doing for the kingdom. But then two, training is training. Yeah. Right. 
hard combat skills are hard combat skills, right? And so, like, that level of don't let anything phase you, right? You get you get hit in the face in the ring. What are you going to do, like, cry about it? <laughs> no, because you have four, you know, four other punches and some kicks, like, also coming your way at the same time. What do you have to do? You have to be focused and you have to... So it's being constantly driven at that point. Right, 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 exactly. Or constantly focused. Constantly focused, but then also, like, that hardwiring practice that you put in, like, months before, like, a tournament, that comes into play in a fight. Just, like, with editing, all those, like, before I even, like, held a camera, like, professionally, like, on my own shoot, I already did three years behind a computer, never, never holding a camera professionally, only for fun. And so then, like... When that translates to like me 10 months ago, okay, I'm starting Figaro Media. I'm going to, the training wheels are coming off because my boss moved to Oregon. Yep. So it's all you now. It's, it's all me. I already know how to do, I already know what to look for. Right. And so that, that's where I say like, that's just a martial artist attitude where it's like hard, um, like hard work is hard work. And I remember you saying this in your, in your episode with Michael is like when you're going to chop down a tree and you have six hours to do it, I'm going to spend four hours sharpening the axe, right? It's, that's like such a, that's like such a fighter, you know, mentality where it's like, I'm going to spend more hours preparing them versus more hours than trying to actually work for it. Right, 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 right. And so it's like, you're going to spend months like hitting the bag and also being used to someone hitting you before you ever step in a ring. Why? Because it's just like, when something hits you or something unexpected happens like on a shoot or like in post and you're like, Oh my gosh, I can't work with this. What are you going to do? Just like you have someone that like is paying you to have like your service. You can't just call them back. It's like, Hey, we need to redo it. Cause I messed up. No, you got to figure it out. You, you can't work like, with what you yeah, got. Yeah. You got to work with what you got. And you also have to tell yourself I'm a professional. I'm good at this. So therefore, it's like you might be down in like the like first half of the match, but then second half, like there's still enough time to bring it back like that. So I would say like attitudes like that from like fighting and like being a martial artist has definitely impacted my my professional career. Absolutely. Like it can't not, you know, sick. Super side note question. Have you ever wanted to be mugged to just like, you know, oh, <laughs> all the time. Man. You're Are like you kidding me. <laughs> you're like walk down San Diego like. Someone mug me right now. <laughs> I dare you. I dare you. No, um, my ego talking 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. No doubt. And then, but then you're like a black belt, but like, but I'm a true martial artist. Yeah. I cannot take anyone down. Right. But you're like, dude, someone mug me. You're about to get the butt whooped out no, of you. That, that, and, and, that's, and that's what I'm saying. So like, again, to... Even but it's like just for fun, though. Ju- just for fun, right. And I, and I, and I think that... There's something to be said about just being in the mindset of fighting. Like, for example, every and this is something I really don't I really don't tell anybody, but I've only told a few people this. But like every night when I'm in the shower, I go through self defense scenarios. Whereas, like in places that I've been, it's like okay, I'm at the ATM, you know, or like I'm I'm at a urinal, my in my back's turned. You know what I mean? Like situations that you never want to. Uh, it's <laughs> pun but caught with your pants down. (laughs) 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 But it's like, you know, when you, uh, when you've been, when you've been so like into these like, uh, scenario or when you've been doing martial arts for so long, you just start thinking of probably like way different scenarios than anyone. I was just thinking like, man, if they said this, I should have said this right back to them. and, And see, like, that's a thing where it's like, then you have to turn the ego down and what, what's, What's the best fight? The one that doesn't happen. Uh, you know what I mean? I was going to say, like, MMA. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and, th- and that's what normal people think. It's just like, you know, the UFC, like, ultimate fighting challenge. That's dumb. That's stupid. Yeah. It's silly. Uh, because, like, well, side note, like, your head can't take that much impact forever. And then also, too, like, going back to what we were, we were saying about earlier, the best fight is one that doesn't happen de-escalating or like learning how to de-escalate a situation or just to avoid one completely that's the true martial art wow that's that like uh as grandmaster would say is like the fight should already over when people look at you because they already see the venom in your your teeth right 
And it's like that that that's the whole thing. It's like, can I open up a can of whoop ass? Absolutely, if I had to. But it's like most of the time, like, what's the higher road? Is just to deescalate, and then one to understand, right? And that's going back into like our Christian Christian mindset. Christian mindset of like, you know, we're fighting for people. People need to be understood. People need to be fought for, not fought against. Yeah, so fighting for the people, not against yeah. the people. And so, like, that's you know, hmm. that's a side note to answer that question. <laughs> It'd be just cool to see you like flip someone. Can you do like a backflip? Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Might need to talk about something later on. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> In twenty twenty, uh, you said on an Instagram post that it is one of the best years of your life. Oh yeah. I was kind of just oh, curious yeah. to why, but then I also wanted to know after uh, the why, if there was any challenges or d- difficult seasons in 2020 for you as well. Oh, absolutely. All so right. I'm going to do a quick costume change. You said in an Instagram post, 2020 was the best year of your life. Kind of want to kind of dive in to knowing why, and then kind of also want to know if there were any challenges, difficulties, or issues. Or in like difficult seasons yeah, that you face in 2020 as well. All right, definitely. So let's tackle that first one. Uh, why was it the best year of my life? 2020 was a, was a long season of a year, if that makes sense, of God closing doors and God opening doors. Or God closing doors, but opening very few. And how intentional is that? but to notice the few doors that are that are in front of you. There's too many doors, right? It's the, uh, it's the paradox of choice, right? It's the, uh, there's too many options. There's too many items on a, on a menu for me to pick just one. And then you're going to start questioning, did I pick the right one? Exactly. Did it, like, what should I have done? What right. if? And I like to weigh things in opportunity costs, right? If I already have in my mind, I'm going to spend $10, the only things to choose from, do I like it in red or do I like it in blue, right? Questions like that. So when you can boil anything down to its simple opportunity cost, then one, I believe that one, you're making a good decision, uh, but then ultimately one that's going to work for you best. So in 2020, all right, just a recap for me, um, Sam moved to Oregon. That was a cut in a lot of hours in editing that I was getting paid really good for. Uh, White Dragon closed for, you know, months. I was denied unemployment. Um, and, you know, I still have to pay for this, still have to pay for this. And, you know, all this kind of stuff. So it was like, you know, I went through like a, in, in all of my peers, every, everyone else that, you know, like in school or like even at White Dragon, like they all got like, 600 a month yeah which was like it was actually more than what they were earning and like then i then i was left with nothing i was i was left with none of that and i was like you know there's like a week where like you know i just got the the letter back from you know uh big brother <laughs> and was just like you know you know, we don't have any award for you at this time, you know, whatever. And then I just had like a, like a pouty party for, for about a week. It was like, you know, like this is unfair, you know, what I, you know, whatever. Um, but then, you know, going back to like that, that fighter, uh, martial arts mentality, it's like, all right, well, and also like a Christian perspective where it's just take, take your mat and walk. Hmm. Like you've been given everything. Just, just go out and do it. And so then and what I still do is like I deliver for Post Mason DoorDash. And it's just like I just didn't like I refused just to be where I was. You know, I did something that was like what you could say, like beneath me. Yeah. Like making probably less than what you were at the time. Sure. Oh, 100 way less. Uh, you know, that that's you know, that's what that question and like to stoop low and again i'm using quotes because like that's what everyone else is going to tell you me being like a a video professional and now going as like an errand boy (laughs) like to anyone that like has any amount of pride in what they do like yeah no that sucks 100 percent. but it's like i refuse to 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 be stagnant right i refuse to 
let my circumstances, I don't know, dictate my, my enjoyment, my happiness, my security, uh, you know, or my status, you know, for, for the most part. Um, and then, you know, I just, I just got to work and that's moments of triumph like that, you know, led me to found Figaro Media where it's just like, all right, like just stop being a baby, stop being a, a buttercup, you know, a little snowflake, plant your feet, stand firm, believe in like what the Lord has, has blessed you with. And trust him with that, with that 10, you know, trust him with that 10%. Because it's just like, dude, I had, I had no money to my name. Because it's like, even, even still, like, I, I always break even. That's just where college students are at. And, like, one, that's okay. When all my peers graduated, like, you know, two years ago, like, I'm still in school. And I'm making way less, yet I'm yet I've worked so hard in so many areas of my life, like martial arts, editing, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, so playing that comparison game in 2020, yeah, man, that's hard. You can't keep that up forever. Uh, I broke up with my, uh, you know, girlfriend of two years, Natalie. Um, and like, dude, like that, that's crazy. You know, because, like, yeah, I was... Yeah, that could be very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, cool. and, like, the thing was is that, like, I just knew that it kind of came to that point where it's just like, oh, my gosh, she's not it. Like, she's not the one. What the heck? You know, and I had already, like, convinced myself, like, of prior to that. And then just, like, kind of rediscovering that and really stepping out and to be like, I don't I don't know why I'm feeling this. Or I do, but I'm not, I'm not going to get into it. But, and then just being like, all right, like, that's it, we're done. And then that just like dropping, like, r like literally like right after my birthday, like in May, you know, and then, you know, then I, then I, uh, started dating Kelly mm -hmm. and like that kind of like exploded of just drama and, you know, with like, with Matt and, you know, our, our like mutual friends, and, you know. Yeah, like it, it was hard, you know, and, you know, my family had gotten super attached to Natalie and wouldn't uh, like allow Kelly to be at the house because like they weren't emotionally ready and like all this kind of stuff. And it was just like strain. But at the same time, it was like, you know, Kelly was like the girl that was always there. I've, I've known her for, for 12 years uh, and then, you know, figured it out. I was like, oh, you uh, anyway. So that. So it sounded like a lot of 2020 faced like a lot more trials than like tri uh, yeah. triumphs. Right. But it's it's always the trials that if you're in a trial, it's never going to end in defeat. Amen. Yeah. Amen to that. Like the trial might not be like two weeks. But you also might not even get the answers you were seeking. It could like could totally end badly, but mm -hmm. it's still there's like an intentional plan. on Yeah. That. Wow. So, uh, let's see. The, and you can totally see, like, if you were to look at my Instagram. Uh, well, actually, you would only know this if you're editing the, like, my, my year in review. Um, where you could tell that I was getting depressed of how little I was filming, like, right before I was breaking up with Matt. Where it was, like, I had so much in January, so much in February... Then, like, March, April, May, I maybe had, like, two clips. Wow. And then, like, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, when Kelly and I started dating again in um, 7-Eleven, it's an easy one to remember, <laughs> <laughs> in July, you can just, my footage just picks up, like, in, you know, like, saturation-wise. And it, it was, like, it was just so crazy how, like, Something like as small as that just like totally picked up. Like a whole new spark. Yeah, like a whole new spark and like you can you can totally tell. Another thing that happened in twenty twenty what that was super awesome is I wrote and produced a song. Really? Yeah. Wow, I did not actually not know about that. Not a lot of people do. Is it posted anywhere? It's not posted yet. Why not? Um Did you sing? 
Yeah, no, I, I I rapped in it. Yeah, really? Yeah, no, it's 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 a rap song. Yeah, and it's kind of like, um, man, rapping is something that I didn't I didn't ever find myself I would ever see myself doing, but yet here I am because it's just like I enjoy the process. Like it was it was therapeutic. Like I just got to put my my heart down on on paper. Um, in one, it was like that's just a moment of, of triumph for me because of like my battle with dyslexia okay wow and you know i just get to you know put things together and like for for a first run i was like whoa was it a freestyle or you like kind of written down oh no no no! i, I totally i totally writ, wrote it down and you know planned it out planned it out and what was that song about that song was about this uh was about the was about my breakup with matt where it was like figuring out that like I want to date Kelly and then this other girl saying that she wants to marry me completely like and so you know there's there's this there's this line in the song where it's like you know what am I going to do with the three girls running around in my brain because it, it was it was very confusing it was like that would be so emotionally yeah confusing it, too. It, it was super confusing because I was like okay Kelly, I don't know if you know this about about you know my relationship with Kelly. Is Kelly told me no at first? At first, she's like no. Nah. Uh, well, mainly because like she she was scared. She didn't really know like where where my head was at. Where it was like you know that's understandable, right? And that's it, completely understandable. And, and, and I get that. Um, and then this girl, um, this other girl, I won't I won't name her by name. We'll just call her uh, Joe. Uh, Stevie, I don't know Stevie Wonder. <laughs> I like that. Joe. Yeah, Joe. Okay, so this girl Joe, she's all like, "Yeah, no, you're, you're the kind of guy like I would totally marry." And I was like, <coughs> "I you just dabbed on her." Like what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, "No, Joe." <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I said, "Yeet." Um, no, no, but be, you'll be the guy that I want to marry. And you know, I was like, I left engagement because natalie and i were gonna get engaged in 2020 it was like i walked out of engagement i'd like this other girl and now you're telling me that like and so like there's 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 a line about that but mainly it's 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 a song of like god i trust you this is what i know to be true about you this is what I'm feeling, and it's this internal dialogue between me and myself and being like, okay, God, I know this is who you are, but th- it still hurts. God, I know that she can't complete me, but I still want her anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? And so it's more of a song kind of just like it's, it's just, it's creating just an, your emotions into like some physical or some that's right. creative way. to. Like it's just a dialogue, between, a dialogue between myself, and we all have that. Yeah. Where it's like, you speak truth into your life, you know, like he's in the waiting. Once I broke up with Matt, I got this one. No way. Like, that was my next question, yeah. actually. So yeah. I knew in June 2020, you got that. And I know it's a verse in the worship song, but yeah. I was going to actually ask. That was my literally written down. What like does that mean to you? What yeah. feelings and what emotions does that like tattoo he's in the waiting cultivate for you? A week after I broke up with Matt, I got this tattoo. And... I was waiting for Kelly's answer. You know, like it was just this season of where where are we going? And it was just like waiting. I, I waited for Kelly's answer for about like six weeks. And all that time is like in that time I, I wrote the song, I produced the song, and it was done. And like while I wait, he's with me and, and he's gonna give me peace. Right? That's you know, the the olive branch. And it was this season of one waiting patiently, but then another another definition of, of of waiting on the Lord that we that we see a lot in in Psalms, like, you know, like I wait on you, I lean on you, like da- where David's you know, in, in agony, but yet praising where it's just like, you know, to wait on someone is to lean into, to trust completely, to surrender or give yourself 
emotionally into the trust of something that that is greater right and so like god is with you when when you when you lean into him amen amen uh and he doesn't promise a lot you know but what he does promise is peace you know and that's that's something that's like you you have to hold on to yeah and um, i think that's interesting that you say that because it's not um clarifying it's not peace in the flesh but peace of the spirit yeah so it's like your fleshly desires your fleshly world can literally like kind of suck but it's like if you're like if you know jesus if you like are firm in him yeah that's when you have yeah. peace is so like your spirit's at peace because yeah. you know you have a god that's back on your side yeah and so that's that's what this tattoo is about uh, and again you'll you'll kind of hear themes of that uh, in the song, and we can listen to it later if you want. But, I'm down. Uh, yeah. So, what's the second part of the of the bigger question? Well, we kind of covered it. That the trial was it was yeah. It that was yeah. that was like were there any challenges? But I guess kind of like you answered what were the challenges. Why would you say it was your best year ever then? Let me let me let me phrase it this way. Let me take my uh, my church experience uh, at North Coast. Being a Christian there, easy, easy. Yeah. You're loved. Hardcore by everybody. At least at least in my experience, I know I know some people would would definitely say otherwise, but like being plugged in easy, being on a team, serving, doing what you're supposed to be doing as a, as a Christian, like in service of, of someone else, easy, um, worship the best teaching straight out of Bible, very little like personal commentary. It's easy to be a Christian. Right. And that's why I kind of wanted to go with rhythm was because like, dude, this, it's not going to be easy. This is, we're like all out on a limb here, like trusting, trusting and trusting the Lord right now, like with service, with uh, like pastoring and teaching, like with gifts, with money. And like six months before Rhythm even launched, like I was supporting them like financially. Yeah. I remember meeting you back in June. First yeah, interest party. First interest party. Like it was like, all right, shoot. Like, dude, that, that money that like God is giving me this. I'm, I'm just like, you know, like, and so, like, having that level of, of trust, again, waiting on the Lord, that's going to be put to the test when, when something is unknown and it's unfamiliar and uneasy. Like, it's, it's not going to be easy. And so, like, that's why, excuse me, I would say that 2020 was the best year of my life was because it wasn't easy. Therefore leaning into the Lord, trusting the Lord more, I reap that benefit. I reap that spiritual benefit. I reap that spiritual growth. You know. Even when you're like fleshly, you know, worldly is facing like so much yeah, trials. So much. And like, you know, I was I was getting sad, like I was getting depressed. Uh which was it's weird to it's weird to say that. Like me. Yeah. You know, like you're like a happy, energetic like me being depressed. Like really? Like that doesn't you know, that doesn't those two often don't, but it's like at the same time, it's like, yeah, no, I put on 30 pounds, which is nuts, which I mean, can't tell, but still it was like, you know, hop on the scale. And I was like, dude, what? Like two or three, you know, I was like 175, you know, back like 2019, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just like, what, you know, like, like all these things where it's just like, I'm having like serious, like image issues that I've never had to deal with before. I'm insecure now for the first time in my life about about my appearance. Like I feel sluggish. I my martial arts like took a dip in the in like skill. Um like confidence just <clears throat> because like you know, I'm like trying to, you know, I'm trying to get ready for this, you know, degree test which I just passed by the way. Nice. Like, like 2 weeks ago like I I made senior first degree which is mad accomplishment. Um like for me I'm just like I'm so I'm so pumped on it. All these things. So, 
because I know that whatever I was doing or what I thought was the way out wasn't working. So then I had to lean in and trust God. Mm. And like that, that's why it was the best year. And like so many good things happened out of it. Kelly, my song, I founded Figaro Media. Like I started working like with my own personal clients. I got mad opportunities to work with you, uh, Coastal Music Studios, you know, being hired out by Chef's Role, like just, just wild, wild. Like I have this, you know, this, like I was telling you, this, this weekly client that I do weekly shoots for as soon as 21, uh, 2021 started, like God's just like, all right, thank you for trusting me. It wasn't easy, but here you go. Not to say that it's just like, you know, if you trust God, you will, you will be blessed. However, reminds me a lot of the Job situation in the Bible. Someone that like not as extreme. <laughs> not a, yeah, of course, of course. Like, yeah, it's not as extreme, but it's kind of um. your life is so good. Your life is so good. And then it's like, that's when like devil saying that's mm-hmm. when like the enemy comes in and says, all right, God, his life's so good. Let me mess with him. Yeah. Like, okay, mess with him. But then it's like, you're not going to shake him. Yeah. That's so cool. Cool. Got two more little questions. All right. Passion projects planned for this year? Um, if any. So, one, I just gotta, I just gotta drop the song. It's, it's seriously just been on the back burner. The song is done. I just want something slightly changed on the timing. Okay. Of like one of the, like one small part in the beginning, and I've just been like really like, uh, chillaxing on it, uh, because it could have gotten fixed like a while ago, and all I need to do is like you know like, hey Logan. Um, can you just fix this? And then, you know, I'm going to drop it. So like one, I have that and I have like, um, three other songs in my head that are just, I just need to sit down and just put them on paper because like the, the idea is just, it's like, it's there. It's, it's fully formed and it's so good. Um, so when are you going to release it? Um, just put a date on the podcast. It's going to force you to do it. <laughs> uh, I, see, I, I don't really know because like I know nothing about putting it on Spotify. Yeah. Not that it's going to be that hard. I can't imagine it being that hard. I just know that it's a little bit of process, a little bit of process, a little bit of legal stuff. Yeah. Right. Because you know, that's, it's my, as soon as it's on Spotify, it's kind of copyrighted in a sense or like Spotify owns it. I don't know. Like I, I know nothing about that world. Uh, and so, and then, Depending on because they choose the date for release, I don't know when that's going to be. I think I have to have a little bit more pull to to pick when I'm going to release it. I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, anyway, so that's definitely going to be like this year, 100. percent And then in video, anything? Um, not not from my end. No, I think there's there's a bunch of projects that just require me to not be in school. That's it. And so like I'm done in August. Then, you know, by then, I don't know if you'll, um, you know, we'll like rehash that out if you want to ever have me back or something. Yeah, but, of course. We'd love to have um, back. Yeah. So I think come time August, my life is going to look like completely different because mm. like, you know, I work three jobs. I'm a teacher of martial arts. I, you know, I, I'm a freelance video guy and I deliver for Postmates DoorDash and, and I'm doing full time school. Like, that's like four jobs right now right right so and taking so, something off your plate right and so like something something needs to give and i can't give any of those right now yeah. to to pursue my my personal stuff sweet last kind of a question for you today what's a piece of advice you wish you had when you first started creating or yeah no i think yeah what is a f- like piece of advice you f- first wish you had when you first started creating kind of do it end off this episode that you can give someone today is this question more uh geared towards me or me giving advice to past me or someone that wants to become someone like me in the future could be a little bit of both okay you could say like what's something like that you wish you had when you first started off and then you could say also another piece of advice that you would want to give someone today all right um so, something that I that I would tell someone, you know, if they ever wanted to to do what I do, 
Um, you don't need the best tools. It doesn't require a lot of money to to start, but you do have to start. Meaning, like, we, we didn't really get into this, but I kind of want to touch on it and kind of give my background in film prior to doing it professionally four years ago is, you know, I've been making videos since since the third grade, you know, doing doing stupid stuff with my friends on iMovie, you know, and then going from Final Cut, then going to Premiere, right? Just kind of like working up professionally in, in that sense. But my first rig was a GoPro Hero 4 Silver that my friend found at the bottom of the ocean while, while spearfishing. And he's like, I already got a GoPro. He's like, you want to buy it? And I was like, yeah. So he sold it to me for, I think, like 100 bucks. And, you know, I got new housing for it. I got like a, a light ring to go around the around the casing. I had a scorpion mount that I, you know, Velcroed a little um, little battery pack that would, you know, that the light would plug into. And like, that's what I used. Right, I had a motorcycle at the time. So, you know, of course I had the, you know, GoPro mount like right here and also on my handlebars. And like, I just started going for it. And I think a total like that cost me around like 200, 230. Like that's, that's really nothing. Like if $230 is kind of getting in the way of, of you doing stuff, then you, and I would even say now probably like GoPro here for most cameras, but people like who are on an iPhone, people listening to this podcast have an iPhone, have an iPhone which is have a way camera. better than, yeah. a, than a GoPro here for silver. Like it wasn't even the black one. Yeah. Like, Everyone knows that, like, GoPros make really good cameras. Yeah. They make a quality product. And, like, for me, back in 2016, 17, that's what I used, like, almost every day. I brought I brought that thing everywhere. And then that led me to double my investment in spending $400 on a, a, a Rebel T6. Didn't have a flip out screen, very limited, but it suited what I needed at the time, which was to have adjustable focus, something that the GoPro like didn't have. Right. And so like first, I think that I would tell someone is like the need needs to be there, like. Or the the, the desire, desire, the want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The want has to be there. You 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 want to go out and create something. So just go and do it. Do it on your iPhone. The, the amount of cinematic prowess that I can do on an iPhone is extraordinary. One, because I, I, use, I use a Scorpion mount and a GoPro for, for a year. And then I use a DSLR that didn't have a flip out screen, so I couldn't even do stuff like this. So yeah. I, I just had to know, right? It didn't have autofocus. It, ha, it, had no, it, just, it just required me to, to be there. Right? Again, it was like that intentionality. You have to be there. You have to be in the spot creatively. And Mikey was saying the same thing, where it's just like, you just have to put yourself in the situation, right? And then that led me to getting something even better, which was like uh, an Osmo, a DJI Osmo Plus, right? And so it was a you know it was a gimbal setup that had adjustable focus, and it shot you know in sixty. Oh, that's something that the DSLR didn't have. It didn't shoot ten eighty at sixty. And so I wanted something like the GoPro that had slow mo. But it was, you know, had had better quality. So then, I put eight hundred dollars towards that investment. Yep. Right, and then, then I figured out, okay, I want, you know, X amount. So so that's what I have. What I have now, Canon M fifty, which I bought the body for five hundred. But see, I already spent like thousands of dollars in lenses already at, at that point. Mm -hmm. So it was like, for each trial, you just have you just have to put yourself in and then see what you want from there now again like if you want a sony don't get a sony right away you know if you if you want like an a in you know a a3 like seven a3 like and now they got r's and r3s and yeah and freaking you know like they have all these like badass cameras don't get one right away because you're never you're not going to know. You're not going to know how to use it. And yeah. you're not going to know what you want. 
Yeah. Because like, one, I never buy Sony because they don't have that super flip out screen. Yeah. They don't. Well, That's they, something that I need. They do now, but they, well, I mean, but at the yeah, time, at the time they did. At the time when like the seven A, you know, seven A, A seven two, A two, three, like, yeah, it had that stupid bendable thing. It only went up this far and it didn't go out this way. It was just like, could I have used that? No. Because I, I need to be able to just just like we're doing right now, I need to be able to see see what I'm shooting without buying a stupid monitor to put on the top and then flip it the other way. It's just like you you wouldn't know that going in. Yeah. And I think it's also cool that it's like you can take any filmmaker, any videographer, you can hand them like an iPhone. They can still probably make like better content than some people who buy like thousand, three thousand dollar cameras and yeah. don't know what they're doing. And there's videos on YouTube like so many like hand a hand a pro a fifty dollar camera and then hand a noob a four thousand like dollar yeah. camera. Uh, you see that all the time. And which one makes a better video every single time? It's the guy that put in the time of trying out a shot, and then going on the computer and being like, "Wow, that mm, no, that didn't work," and then adjusting accordingly. Right. So it's like if I were to say it to anybody, it's just like, just try it and then immediately watch it again. Yeah. You know. Um, and so what? What was the? What was the other question? Something that I wish I had? Um, no, a piece of advice you would give yourself when you were first starting off. So that was kind of like a piece of advice you would give mm, to yeah, anyone. Yeah, yeah. Piece of advice you needed to hear. Uh, I don't know. That, that, that's a hard one because, like, I think my path of, you know, of creating, I, I think, is the right path. Mm-hmm. Like, I stumbled upon the, the professional field of, of film, like, because it was passion. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I can actually make a career out of this. Some, something I didn't mention was, like, I was going to apply to Chapman uh, Film School, Dodge, Dodge, Dodge College uh, in, you know, in Orange. Or well, it's close to Anaheim, rather. But anyway, you know, it's like NYU, like USC Chapman. Like, as far as, like, film schools go. Yeah. You know? Um and I, I filled out my application and I never sent it in. Like I finished it; it was completely done. Plus the art supplement, which was make a video, that that was all done. I just never sent it in application. I, I can't tell you why, but I never did. Uh, and I decided to get a degree in business instead. Hmm. But it was it was like three years later after that decision that I decided, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a degree in business and just do this video stuff for fun. And then. You know, like like I was saying, you know, are you still doing a degree in business? I right am. Now? Yeah. I am. Yeah. So I'll be done in 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 August. Nice. Right from from Point Loma Nazarene. Um. But I think just having someone over your shoulder, having a mentor. Yeah, having a mentor. I think that that's the biggest thing. And just to you know, God's God's taking care of all that. Where like my mentor Sam. He was my uh, small group leader in high school, you know, and then be okay with working close to your friends, but not with your friends. What do you mean by that? Um, being in a creative setting, people that people that all do the same stuff, film, photo, graphic, uh, you know, public speaking. Uh, musically talented artists being around those people gets gets the juices going gets gets an idea work work with them but again like they're your friends and business is business is business unfortunately uh and one of those things is like i'd rather keep a treasured relationship than going into a business relationship gotcha you know and that environment, that friend supportive environment, I never wanna I never wanna sacrifice. For a business. Yeah, for, for business. Hmm. And like no one tells you that when you're doing it on your own for the first time. You know? Like it's just something that you figure out where you're just like, Oh man, I you know, like now I'm treating you like a like a client. I don't like that. Yeah feels way different. Yeah, it feels way different. And that's why, you know, like, I'm always honored to be like, you know, when you, when you asked me to be a secondhand shooter, the first time I was, you know, I was honored. But I'm also like a little, a little nervous at the same time. Because it's just like, 
you could just ruin a friendship so easily. Yeah, and it's like that. That's not something we want, but that's something that is just like you prepare the horse for, and the Lord's gonna take care of the rest. But you have to have that mindset going in, where it's just like, okay, like cool it, let them, let them direct you. You know, and one and once once you kind of have that, like that's what I would tell myself is just like when it's when it's your client, go for it. You know, you call the shots. But it's just like and you and you might even know what to do better. But just shut up. You know, because it's it's their it's their lesson to learn. It's their mistake to be had. It's their triumph to be like Are you telling me I made a mistake? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but what I was no, saying you're was good, just you're like good. where it was just like, you know, that's why I get like so excited where it's just like I would have I would have approached this differently, but it's cool that like I see it coming from another angle and then it's like it's their victory because they they found like some nuanced way to to get the thing done. And that's like why I was so stoked when I saw like that, you know, um was it song Kisses, Summer Kisses, something like that. From Yeah, from David, David Swiss Fine. Yeah, yeah. Um where I was just like, Oh, it turned out turned out so good. Mm-hmm. You know? With such a complex setup and I was like, Oh man, this is this is a lot. I would probably go about it this way. Let's let's kind of see what what Matt does. Nope, it's good. It's good. Yeah, well, we're just on that one oh, camera okay. now. Yeah, oh, the card's full. Gotcha. Yep. But yeah, Might so treasure audio. treasure people over over your craft. Sweet. Yeah, that's that's kind of like my closing remark is treasure people uh, over over your job because money comes and go. You know, comes and goes. Work comes and goes. Uh, you know, if, if there's anyone that knows all about that from last year, it's me. Work left. Yeah. You know, but I was also able to, to get it back through, through you know, you know, Trials. prayer and hard work, yeah. you know. Because um, people are the only thing that we can take with us. And they matter way more than, than a paycheck. Gotcha. Sweet. Well, thanks for coming. Heck yeah, dude. Sweet. Stoked to be here. And that's where the outro. And roll the outro.